Let's talk about now GPA calculations and CGPA as well. I've received a lot of questions about it, so let's settle it here once and for all. For degree programs now uses five point scale and for postgraduate programs as a PGD and MSc now uses a four point scale and I'm going to show you the difference here and um, on your screen you see to the right here on a student's two marks to 100 the person gets an A and the equivalent point for this A is is five points. The equivalent point for this A is five points. B is four points. C three points. D two points. E one point. And F is none zero. So you will have to rewrite the course, and that is what we call a carryover. F is zero. That is carryover. You will have to rewrite. Um, the course means you didn't pass the course. So if you look at this, I pick up this program, uh, BSc Agricultural Extension and Management from now official website. These are the registrable courses on the website and the, uh, the Faculty of Agriculture. This person offers about nine courses for the first semester. This is the first semester. 100 level and these are the course codes these are the course titles then at the end of the exam the student made this this is what uh, now students results looks like it is not exactly like this currently it is not exactly like this because there is no credit units the student will not see their credit units on their results and the grade points are not there too but the it departments will work on that ict departments they will work on that in future and then include all these so that students will know their stand uh, every semester but for now you can do these calculations on your own you don't have to wait for the ict department to do something about it from this video you are here to learn how to do it on your own it is good as a student to take control of your studies take control of your studies do everything or let me just say certain things on your own let me show you how i made these calculations here and what these colors represent um this person got an a for physics 191 the grade point according to this the grade point for this a is five and the credit unit for this 191 is two units so to get the grade point for this one course this is 191 you will have to multiply these two five times two which will now give you 10 that's what this means gp times CU credit units. The grade points times the units will give you the, the GPA. So we say for this 191, this person have made 10 points. Then for Math 101, which is called, it got B, the, the point is four. Multiply it by the units, which is three, which will give you 12. This person scored B again on CHM 101. Multiply it, uh, it, it gives you 4. Multiply it with the credit unit 2 to give you 8. That's 4 times 2, 8. So that's how these calculations came about. Now, but somehow, uh, this guy got an F here. So even though the grade point is 0, it does not stop, stop or prevent including the credit unit here. The during uh, orientation students have been told sometimes on uh, that and now um, the failure here just means you have to write the course and, and it doesn't mean it to be used to calculate your results 
Uh, that means uh, during calculation, whatever you scored, if you if you rewrite the course maybe two times and you pass it the second time or the third time, it will not be divided into three. Whatever you scored at the last will be used to uh, make your calculations. But these are just uh, take it as assumptions and keep to your studies. Make sure you don't fail just in case uh, it becomes otherwise. So look at this. This person has uh, 19 credit units for the first semester, 100 level. 19 credit units, that's what this yellow box means. 19 credit units. Then the blue box here, the sky blue, shows that the total grade point this person has earned for this first semester is 50. So to get his GPA for that first semester, 100 level, you will now see the grade point the person earned, the total grade point the person earned divided by the credit unit, the total uh, number of credit units, or the sum of the credit units, which is 50 divided by 19 which will now give you 2.6. 2.6 on a five point scale shows that the class of degree for that person at that moment is second class lower. That's why I wrote this, second class lower. Using, a, using this uh, class of degree that I've just displayed here. You can see that 2.40 to 3.49 is still under second class lower. 2.40 to 3.49 is second class lower. And this person is 2.63. 2.63 means that it's not up to 3.5. Therefore, it's still under second class lower for that first semester 100 level then second semester you made the same calculation and then you find yourself at 3.6 this is the total credit unit you you, you end the, the total point you end and this is the credit unit you carried or you registered 22 units 81, which is the unit you end, divided by the ones you registered, the 22, give you 3.6. At this point, this person now moved up a little from second class lower to second class upper. Then he enters uh, second year, 200 level. There we are, first semester. Then he still remain at the same level, but with a higher GP, GPA, 3.71. Second semester, second year. He still moved up a little more. Sorry. Second semester, yes, he still moved up a little more. Look at this, 3.8. The same second class upper, second class upper. He's trying to maintain that level. But somehow, Somehow, third year, 300 level, first semester, something happened to him. Look at this. There is much of E here. There's E, E, another E, which affected his own grade. And it became 2.18. It took him down or her down to third class. Then, he didn't just quit. Second semester, third year. His uh, GPA now went back to second class upper. So after his uh, CUS, first class, his fifth year, like here, you're supposed to complete 10 semesters instead of normal eight and you know, many other classes. These people, this, uh, they, they complete 10 semesters like the faculty, that law. And the health sciences, you know, they may complete 10, 10 semesters. Their uh, credit uh, units required for them to graduate is different from 
uh, other departments that complete their, their studies within eight semesters, so that's four years. Like these people, law, you will be seeing 202 credit units required for them to graduate, so 200 and something. These people also 200 and something, or 180, 70, so it's, it's not the same as other faculties. So you have to do your own by consulting your faculty handbook. Now look at this, this person climbed up again back to uh, uh, second class upper, sorry. This is not third class, this is second class upper. Once it is, uh, sorry, second class lower. Second class uh, lower. It's not up to 3.5, so it is still a range of second class lower. That's 51 divided by 15. So look at this again. Uh, coming down here, it's still made it. 3.4, 3.44. Still second class lower, but very close to second class upper, which is 3.5. So now that is how to calculate your GPA every semester. Now, how about cumulative grade point average? Cumulative grade point average. It is the total sum. Look at this. Total credit units carried, that is the number of credit units you've registered throughout the years of your studies. This person had 178 units. Now, this person, uh, the, the total grade points end. At the end, the grade points end from first semester, uh, year one, second semester to final year. The summation, you add them up. First semester, you add the grade points you end. Second semester, you add all of them up. Now, it gave 623. 623 points. Now, what you now have to do to get your cumulative, cumulative grade point average is to divide this 629 by 178 to give you 3.5. And finally, you are graduating with second class upper. Just 3.5 is second class upper. Look at it here. The class of degree, the class of degrees are here. 3.5, that is the second one, this one here. The 3.5 to 4.49 is second class upper. So let's look at the masters. The masters program have different the same calculation but different scaling. The GPA calculation for masters and PGD are the same. In their results, you wouldn't see D. Look at it here. What we have is A, B, C, and F. PGD students and master students would only see A, B, C, or F. Anything below 49, 49 and below is F. We we'll have a different uh, uh, point of scale. And look at this. From 3.5 to 4.0 is already first class. That's the class of degree is also different. It's on a four point scale. Unlike the degree program that is on five point scale. So here we have a four point scale. We we'll have 3.5 to 4.0 first class, 3.0 to 4.0 uh, to 3.49 second class upper, 2.0 to 2.99 is second class lower, 1.0 to 1.99 is third class. That is for PGD and MSc. So when you come down here, you still have the same calculation normal that we just did. Grade A point is five. Five times two will give you ten. The same way, the same calculations. You get your grade point for the first semester. MSc PGD you have three semesters, and that's all. Depending on the number of courses they offer for for these some programs, um, MSc programs, PGD programs, you are required to to have at least uh, thirty-five units before you can graduate. You have carried at least uh, 35 units 
uh, graduate uh, to graduate you need you need to carry at least 35 units to graduate from msc or pgd it depends on your program so that's where faculty handbook plays that's where faculty handbook plays a uh, very good role never you ignore your faculty handbooks so when you come down here you find out that this person first semester had 3.5 that's first class even though he failed one course second semester a person had uh, 3.7 that's still first class and his project he had uh, 4.0 which is still uh first class see what i'm saying here so this person potentially is a first class holder look at it here at the end when you sum everything up and divide sum the grade points end and divide you find out this person has first class 184 by 184 by 50 divided by 50 you have 3.68 very close to the best of his or her set so it's just the same way the same calculation but with a different scaling a different slightly different scaling so just use this as an example let me show you something about your faculty handbooks look at this inside your faculty handbook this one is for faculty of arts you will still find information about this grade point average and the calculations faculty of law look at this not only faculty of law most all faculties they will tell you something about the minimum requirement for your graduation student must have 202 credit units except for direct entry student which must also have 195 credit units this inside your faculty handbook that's where you find it check your faculty handbook for most of the information you need they are there look at the faculty of science you will see this thing that i just used look at this the great points the letter a had has five points from 70 and above and all that anything below 49 is filled so that's how postgraduates is being graded in National Open University of Nigeria. You download the Faculty of Science Handbook for today, you will see this. This table you are seeing here. Faculty of Science table uh, uh, handbook contains this. I don't know, there, you can still find it in some other uh, handbooks, but I, I would I will not here to be searching to you have to do it on your own. Yeah, take control of your studies find open your own handbook all of them contains how to calculate this gpa it may not be detailed as i've just shown you on the video but at least you will get one or two information from the handbook a lot not just two a lot of information from the handbook